Hello students, welcome to uh, this new paper, Forensic Serology. Uh, I'll just introduce the paper in this uh, short video, uh, so you know what to expect in this paper. So, Forensic Serology is a continuation of what we've learned in the previous semester, Forensic Biology. And uh, in, if you remember in Forensic Biology, we learned uh, the different uh, body fluids, biological specimen like blood and semen and saliva, urine, all those specimen. But in biology, we stopped with detection of those uh, biological fluids or biological specimen. But in serology, we'll move one step forward and identify uh, the origin of that biological fluid. We'll try to identify if there are any more antigens or antibodies which help us to individualize those body fluids. So we'll move one step ahead in uh, forensic serology. So uh, we start off with understanding or revising what we already learned. If you remember, we started off with blood in our uh, forensic biology uh, paper also. So here again, we will uh, have the first unit as uh, forensic importance of blood. And the blood is a very common evidence, biological evidence that we see in uh, forensic science, we encounter in forensic science. It has multiple different uh, specialities uh, with it. So blood, as you know, has uh, red blood cells, it has bigger white blood cells. It also has plasma, okay, which are cellular fragments. And uh, you know that red blood cells don't have a nucleus. WPC have a nucleus. Okay. All that we have learned even in our previous paper. But what, what we're more interested in are the antigenic structures over our red blood cells. And humans have certain antigens present over their red blood cells. So supposing you have a red blood cell here, you have a lot of antigens over it and those antigens help us to individualize the uh, human uh, blood, human red blood cells. Those antigens, as we all know, uh, we commonly call them as our uh, blood group antigens. So we have uh, A group, we have B group, we have AB group, and we also have O group as per the ABO blood system. And we also have another major blood system, which is our RH which has what is known as B antigen. So if a, a person has a B antigen, he is known as A pos. And if he does not have a, a D antigen, if he is negative, then he is called, called as A negative. And similarly, the others. And in our ABO system, which is a more important system, it depends on what type of antigen is present over our red blood cell. So if our red blood cell has A antigen, he is going to be a group and if our red blood cell is going to have B antigen, he is going to be of B group. Then if a person uh, on his red blood cell has both A and B, he is going to be A B group. And if a person's red blood cell do not have any antigen, both A and B, he is going to be a O group person. So that's how we understand our uh, major blood group system. But this is not the only blood group system. There are so many other blood group systems which we will be uh, seen. Okay, so we will be uh, considering a lot of other antigens as well. And if we, if we can uh, just think about, uh, you know, antigens for a minute. So we start off in serology always by understanding what are antigens and what are antibodies. So our system, our human body is considered to be a sterile being. And when a foreign substance, uh, when a substance like a protein, uh, for example, invades the system, it starts or it creates an immune response where our body starts producing antibodies specific against the antigen. And this antigen is neutralized by this antibody, made inactive, and we are free. We have only antibodies left. So we are immune to different diseases. It can be viral diseases, bacterial diseases, and different things. So we need to understand how blood groups were formed also. Blood groups also work in the same way, like your antigens and antibodies. So similarly, our blood groups also, if you uh, get into the blood group understanding, we were born with the antigens. And then we were exposed to A and B antigen in the environment. A was something that we already had, so that was okay. But B was something that we did not have, so we started producing anti-B. That is why a person who is A group has in his plasma anti-B. Similarly, vice versa for a B group person. So we need to understand how this happens in the uh, human body and why it happens and what are the different other antigens similar to our ABO blood grouping system. 
are there any other antibodies and antigens that are present? Yes, there are many different uh, groups other than your ABO and RH. There is, you know, uh, the Del group and uh, Duffy group uh, and uh, M N P group and uh, Kid group. Okay, so multiple different groups are there, which we will be studying uh, in in our uh, chapter. Okay, so we'll be uh, learning about some of these blood groups and their forensic significance as well. But more than all that, we are going to deal with origin. So what blood is it? Is it of human blood or is it some other animal's blood? So uh, all our red blood cells have certain antigens. Mostly we have what is known as a H antigen. And this H antigen is a marker for human blood. So we can identify if our blood has this antigen, we can understand it as human antigen. So that is a very good uh, way of understanding origin. So there are multiple different ways which we will be learning in our uh, unit one as part of forensic serology. What about the second uh, unit? Second unit, we're going to talk about semen and other important body fluids. So semen and uh, what are the usual other body fluids that we get, we will be studying uh, in the unit, uh, which is unit two. Uh, you, you already know now what is semen. So semen is the male uh, reproductive fluid which has the uh, gamete uh, cell which is your spermatozoa. The head has DNA okay, and head also has in a secretor person it also has these different antigens that we spoke about. It can have a, a group, B group, it can also be identified as O group. If the antigens are not present, it can also be identified as A B group. Okay, so that is very helpful. We, we again can do origin of uh, semen, we can do duping of semen. There are multiple things that we do with duping. Similarly, the unit uh, that follows is other body fluids, so saliva and tear and other uh, not very common body fluids. Also, we can identify the blood group using those body fluids. How do we do that? So there is this phenomenon of the secretor gene, SC gene, and more than 81% uh, population have this SC gene. And when we have this SC gene, we're called as secretors. So most of us humans are secretors. And what does secretor mean? Secretor means we secrete the blood group antigens A and B in our other body fluids. So saliva and all these other body fluids also produce these different or secrete these different A and B antigens. So finally, we get to uh, you know, um, uh, identify them in our blood grouping uh, techniques. And the fourth uh, unit is genetic marker analysis. So we will understand how uh, you know, the different allelic systems, mostly based, mostly uh, about our AB4 system. So how do these phenotypes A, B, A, B, and O, how are they genotypically seen? So genotypically O is O, O, and A is A, B, whereas here it can be A, A, or A, O. Similarly, B, B, or B, O. So this complicates our uh, genetic markers when we do parental analysis and uh, grouping prediction, things like that. So we will understand how uh, this uh, gene type is uh, useful in our uh, science as well. Okay, so we'll use the uh, Punnett square and things like that to understand how uh, genetics works. Okay, so and uh, we will also introduce the concept of DNA and DNA uh, typing and the significance and the uniqueness of DNA, etc. Finally, uh, the final uh, unit we will have blood pattern analysis. So we all heard of blood pattern analysis. We know that uh, blood has a particular uh, consistency and viscosity. So we will call it viscosity now. So this viscosity makes blood behave in a certain way when gravity works on it. So we know that uh, blood, uh, when it falls from a different angle, makes different um, you know, uh, impressions on the ground. So a vertical drop makes a round uh, um, you know, shape, uh, anglish drop, it creates a tailed drop, okay? So the more the angle, the tail increases. So can we identify uh, based on the drop, the angle of fall? Similarly, if it's going to be a 
uh, straight drop. So uh, if it's going to be a vertical drop, again, uh, the lower the height, you're going to have, you're going to have uh, you know, uh, a smaller drop. The bigger the height, you're going to have a bigger drop. So now this is going to help you identify height of fall. Okay. So there are multiple things that we can use for, it can be useful in uh, crime reconstruction when we are able to tell the investigating officer what happens. Similarly, when there is a kind of a ballistic wound, for example, you get blood scattered away from the central point. You have a scatter, blood scatter analysis. So now, based on this pattern that you're seeing here, you can identify where the point of origin or the point of uh, you know convergence is was most probably going to be. So you can understand the height of the shooter, the position from the shooter to the victim. Okay, so you can see multiple things uh, by using convergence study. Then we also, uh, you know, it's possible to even identify uh, the source of blood. Is it from the artery? Uh, from the artery, the blood, uh, you know, forms a wavy pattern. From a venous uh, wound, the blood pattern, the, the generalized blood pattern looks different. We can understand uh, such things as well. So there are so many things that we can usefully uh, make use of using the different patterns that we see of blood in the crime scene. So we're going to see these different five different units uh, in forensic serology. And uh, we'll be learning one by one. We'll start off with the first unit and we'll move on to the next units as well.